So up next we do have Hammerhead Labs performing Resident Evil 2 Leon A standard 120 FPS run. Uh, so I'm excited to see this. I've played Resident Evil 2 some, but I uh, can't wait to see how uh, Hammerhead Labs will play the game and get into it. So uh, Hammerhead Labs, are you there? I am here. All right, perfect. So I will hand it over to you and we can get started on the game. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Hammerhead. I uh, speed run a lot of uh, like Spyro and Crash games. Uh, I'm here actually doing Resident Evil 2 today, and I am joined by Miss Marforia. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me today. Another uh, Resident Evil runner. And uh, I say let's uh, go ahead and just get on into it. So I'm just going to go in here. We're going to start a new game. And then we can start time in three, two, one, and let's go. And then we're going to start off by seeing the scariest part of this game, um, which is station. this burger. <laughs> oh, that too. Yeah, the burger, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to, we start off in the gas station. The gas station is home. Yeah, that was why I said it was scary, because you see it probably like, you know, a hundred times in a week or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But we're going to be going to the back room over here. Um, we're going to see our first zombie. His name is Frank. Uh, Frank is sometimes a jerk. Pretty much all the zombies in this game, uh, when the game first uh, came out, all of the speedrunners just named all the zombies because, you know, they're the ones that you encounter the most. Uh, pretty much all of them, I think, all have names. Oh, I got bit by Frank. <laughs> oh no, Frank. Uh, oh, you got me already. <laughs> Oops. Just all right, hug. we're fine. Yeah, it's all right. We we actually get a full heal leaving the gas station. So it's not that big a deal. It loses like, I don't know, like five or so seconds. Now, do you want to tell our friends what that cool thing is in the top left corner? Uh, yeah, the in the top left, we have what's called the SRT. Um, it's called, uh, stands for the speed run tool. And it pretty much gives us like all the information that uh, helps us with the run, um, giving us our health. Um, it like gives us where we are, the zombies health that are around us, and then most importantly, the DA. Uh, Mar, you want to explain what the DA is? Yep, DA uh, stands for difficulty adjustment. Uh, basically, uh, the difficulty will range depending on, uh, it, it will adjust depending on how well or poorly you do in the game. So if you're playing really well, uh, you know, hitting all your shots, all that sort of stuff, your DA will go up. Um, if you get bit, if you die, if you heal, your DA will go down. So in this run, you want to keep your DA, uh, I was going to say like what, I know by the time you get to the lab, you want your DA to be like around six or seven, right? You want it below seven. Below seven, okay. Yeah, so um, just something that we keep an eye on because not just, because uh, DA will affect how your boss fights will go. So, um, you know, we have a specific way to fight, you know, G and all that sort of stuff. So you want to make sure that your DA is not too low or not too high, because then it just will throw throw you off. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so ideally in a run, you want to get bit like a couple times um, because you don't want your DA getting too high. Otherwise, uh, some stuff becomes harder. It like affects like your knife durability and the knife's very important in this game. Yeah. And there's only so many we pick up, and you literally need all of them. Like, you can't spare any extra ones. Like, we will get rid of a couple uh, intentionally, but not not all of them. Oh. So there's right. a quick pause here to... Um, basically, it baits Cal... Like, uh, you can anticipate like when Callahan busts open that door. Uh, you can just phase right through it. Sometimes it'll bonk you, so that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I got a little scared there, because a lot of times when you bonk... Uh, you get staggered enough to where he, uh, he does bite you. Does anyone know what started this? Yeah, but you did you did good. No biting. <laughs> and yeah, interesting thing uh, that was brought up in the chat. DA is actually pretty much it's been present in every single Resident Evil game since OG RE4, I believe. Yes. So yeah. if you if you've played any modern Resident Evil game, uh, DA is present for sure. Um, and some of the games uh, require that DA manipulation because. Um, 
Like, well, in RE7, we don't manipulate DA at all, except for knife only. In RE Village, we do manipulate DA to get it as low as possible. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting throughout the course of these games, all the, all the, you know, sort of DA minute that goes on. All right. I uh, hope you guys all get used to that hallway. We're going to see it a few times. <laughs> and then we're going to jump to this window. We're going to say hi to Donuts right here. He's... Uh, Trying to get in the vending machine, but we're just mm -hmm. gonna go this way. And then what I'm gonna be doing here, I'm gonna be doing a combination of stair skate, stair skates, and quick turns. <laughs> <laughs> I tried combining the words, didn't really work. To get up the, yeah, I'm gonna get these stairs fast. We're gonna shoot marks in the face to stun him. Yeah, pretty much every set of stairs in this game. Uh, stair skating, basically, uh, you'll you'll see what Hammy did, uh, alternating between like he just quickly aims down sights. Uh, if you're if you're running on PC, that's basically just tapping uh, your right mouse button. But you do it in a specific rhythm, uh, and if you do that in that specific rhythm, you'll go up the stairs uh, a little quicker, which is pretty cool. Are you okay, Marvin? Yeah, and then I'm gonna take the elevator down to the bottom floor here. Oh, there's Eleanor. She is walking away from me, so that's fine. Yeah, um, pretty much all the zombies in this game have RNG. <laughs> um, and what's interesting is that there's a certain amount of patterns that these zombies can have. So in the library there, Eleanor, the female zombie, uh, she could sometimes be right in front of you. She could be away from you. So that was some good RNG for Hammy there. Yeah. And another bit of RNG was that medallion puzzle I just did. Um, so the answer to the medallion puzzles is going to be the same every single time I do it. But the starting positions of each of the symbols is going to be different. Uh, and it's just pure RNG, what you get. You have to memorize, you know, some patterns and where things are um, just to get it done as quickly as possible. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the different rotations there, you'll just kind of have to... Some, you know, once you get up to a high level, you can see that pattern. And it's like, oh, one up, one down, you know, two down or something like that. So it's pretty gnarly. Here. I'm surrounded by zombies. Yeah, and then what I just did, I just uh, manipulate my inventory a little bit. The inventory is very, very important in this game. Um, everything that I pick up has a spot where it needs to go. Um, so you saw I move my gun to the bottom right because I don't really. That's the farthest uh, place where my uh, my mouse will reach. So, and I don't need to really interact with my gun uh, throughout the run, but it leaves these uh, top spaces open. Uh, for me to use uh, and that's where I'll put like all of my key items just to access them as quickly as possible yeah menuing is really really important in uh, this speed run it's really important in pretty much every single Resident Evil speed run and uh, the menu operates a little differently in, in a lot of these games but this one's pretty interesting uh, your cursor will always reset to the top left corner so what Hammy said with, uh, you know, wanting to have his items in the first couple slots. So you basically, uh, as long as you know what's coming up, all you have to do is just spam your confirm button. Or, you know, if you know something is coming up and like, you know, you need to use that valve. It's like, OK, over one. Got to, you know, so it's, it's really cool. Once you get that menuing down, you don't have to think twice. That's. Bagels, right? <laughs> yeah, that's bagels. He's RNG of where he's standing. Sometimes, like, you could see him uh, in the hallway before you turn. Sometimes he's hiding right around that corner, and there's, like, no way you can avoid him. Yeah, it's really scary mm -hmm. when he's right there around the corner. So I know you mm -hmm. prefer him to be, like, in that hallway already when you could see him. Yeah. Yeah, ideally, I think best case scenario is that he's, like, in the hallway, but, like, far to the left and turned around. Just so you can just run right past him without shooting in. Yeah, so like we said with the menuing, you know, it was right there. Uh, second slots, so all he had to do was just mouse over. Um, you could either spam your confirm button with your mouse or just use, uh, sorry, with your keyboard or just click with your mouse. So whichever is more comfortable. And then we get to uh, meet our favorite enemy up in here. <laughs> all right, yeah, this is Randy, uh, named after the wrestler Randy Orton. Uh, great he RNG. Just, <laughs> yeah, because he'll just sometimes pounce you when you're walking by. Yeah, that was great. Mm, no. Fished. There we go. Alright. Yeah, and I'm going to run to the library. There's a knife on the ground here. Going to grab that. Important. Going to run right behind Eleanor. 
<laughs> and usually, it. yeah, usually she gets stuck behind the bookcase over there. So it gives me enough time to move uh, these bookcases over. I'm going to be moving them a little bit later on in the run um, as I'm leaving RPD. But that just gives me like a little head start on it for later. And then I'm going to place the, the C4 there. I'm going to grab this uh, hit pouch, which just allows me to grab a couple more items. I'm going to need to pick up a couple of them throughout the run. So what you saw Hammy do there, uh, walked out that door, came back in, because normally when the C4 blows up, that bookcase gets knocked over, and then you have to, you know, move the bookcase. Uh, so the it, a liquor spawns in here after that whole thing blows up, right? So it's yeah. an interesting little uh, glitch there, if you want to say yeah. that, um, where that, that bookcase won't fall anymore. Yeah. And the liquors in this game are, we call them camera shy because they're very influenced by the camera, whether you're like looking at them or not. Um, so what I did for that one is I just looked up and it just baited his attack in a certain way. Um, so he misses me every single time. Yeah, so uh, pretty much all the liquor encounters, because you saw it with our first encounter there outside the star's office. We saw it right here. So you'll see that uh, a couple more times here in the run. All righty, we are on our way to our first boss fight. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people were thinking, I only have a pistol and some knives. Um, how am I going to beat a boss? <laughs> With magic. Yeah. <laughs> Leon's pretty looks. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you'll see I'm running at 120 FPS. And this game, uh, because it made so very well, um, the higher the FPS, the more hits your knife will do as you're slicing through an enemy. Um, and that makes the knife completely broken. So it's at 120 FPS, which is the max allowed for this category, just so it's not like a pay to win. So if you have a beefier computer, um, you don't get better knife attacks. Um, but it'll allow me just to kind of eat through all the bosses in the game with just a knife. Yeah, you beat these bosses super quick here. Uh, 15 slashes for G1, right? Uh, about. Yeah, so Hammy's going to slice very particular spots here, uh, aiming down so it goes right through his shoulder. Very beautiful. Nice. Yeah, you just want to be uh, in a position uh, to where you get like the most like surface area through your knife slashes. So I'm usually going to be standing a little bit to, like, to the left, just because Leon swinging is the right hand, and I'll just allow like maximum amount of contacts. Now, question for you. Uh, what made you pick between uh, Leon and Claire? Because, uh, you know, there's there's two different categories for this game. You know, you can run well, as actually, Leon or run as Claire. <laughs> there's four different categories. There's two scenarios for each character. Well, I mean, the characters. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, mainly because this is the only uh, scenario I played through. I haven't played through this Claire scenarios yet. <gasps> oh, no. You hear that, folks? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. So right there, I wouldn't normally pick that up in a in a run for like PBs or anything, um, but it's just an extra item pouch I'm gonna be using that uh, just to store some extra healing just for the marathon run. Yeah, that's because, nice. Yeah, because dying is not good in this game. No, <laughs> thankfully this game does have auto saves, but um, with some deaths it'll teleport you very far back, and mm -hmm. uh, even though your DA gets lowered, it's still like darn, I have to go through this whole thing again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the uh, the worst one is like a death in like the lab liquors. Yep. <laughs> which will put you back. It's first off a very hard section, and I die there all the time. But it puts you back uh, three minutes. Yeah. Uh, basically, if you die there, you have to reset, and that's so close to the end of the game. So mm -hmm. it's okay, dude. I that, that's happened to me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we finished RPD one. Uh, we're going through the underground section. We're going. Uh, basically, what there was a little note on the table. We have to release that guy from uh, his prison cell to get the parking pass to get out. And there was a note on the table uh, to fix the electrical box on the wall. Uh, we need to find the two electronic parts in the RPD. The first one is here in the kennels, where we're gonna start seeing the dogs. Up and the second one is in the clock tower. All right, come over here. We're going to open this door with the crank that we just picked up. But yeah, there, there's a lot of RNG in the dogs. Yeah, um, there are. Oh, go ahead. 
Oh, I was gonna say there's some like consistent movement we could do for some of them, but there still is RNG. I could just get like randomly bit. Usually they don't do too much damage though. Yeah, um, there are specific lines you can take, uh, especially out of here, um, out of out of the garage and all that stuff here. There are some specific lines that'll help you here. Um, even though, uh, also, even though those medallion puzzles were RNG, this puzzle here, there is pretty much all the other puzzles are not RNG, so thankfully uh, we don't have to think too much about these ones. Yep, so if we hug the corners, if we, if we hug the edges here really, really tight on it, uh, on the fences here, take the specific line, that first dog should not uh, 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 get you there. <laughs> yeah, you have to be quick or else he, he will bite you. And then there's a specific line going through this room. I'm going to run towards this wall here, and then when I pass those grates on the, uh, on the ground, run to the door and he usually whiffs there to the left. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> He's running alongside you for a bit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is probably one of my least favorite parts of the RPD coming up. Um, I'm, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bait the zombies here uh, with a gunshot. And I'm going to shoot the ground next to them, and I'll hopefully uh, move them in a way that I could run past them because they'll be too uh, focused on where I shot. So let's see if it works here. Yeah, um, there's a couple spots you can shoot the ground to kind of manipulate their movement. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You have to do this part pretty quick because uh, you have to go grab this knife on the wall, uh, solve this uh, solve this fuse. Uh, thankfully, uh, we do get intentionally a bit here and we get rid of our knife. Uh, but sometimes, depending on the placements of those guys, this part can be pretty rough. But Hammy did it. That was nice and clean. Good job, dude. I'm just gonna grab this for for healing for later, just in case I need it. And then we're gonna go up here to the top floor. We're gonna open this door first, and we're gonna grab the large gear. That's the first thing we need for the clock tower. And it's very yeah. important, right? <laughs> it, it is very important. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we can't skip these uh, door opening cutscenes. All right, so we're going to run in here. This is a storage room. Uh, there is a zombie in here. I actually don't know where he is. Uh, we yeah, just hear him. <laughs> we get in and out of here so quick. I don't even yeah. think I've seen this guy. I think he's there to the right, but you're like, like we said here, we're just out of here so quick. Mm -hmm. um, we grab this flash grenade um, for the prison later. Uh, there are some runners who don't grab that grenade at all, but oh my goodness, that is, uh, that'll yeah. make that prison part very scary. But, uh, you know, it saves only a few seconds, so we might as well just uh, yeah. pick it up. And then I grab I grab that extra one here for uh, Misty and Brock. Oh yeah, yeah that makes this, yeah. Yeah. There is movement you can do to get in and out of this room uh, without flashing them, but uh, very difficult. Yeah, so that's it's just another, easier to flash them. <laughs> yeah, that that's another one you have to be super mm -hmm. quick at if you don't use that flash. But um, the flash stuns them for quite a long time, uh, and you know we're in and out of there super quick, so it's it's okay to pick that up. All right. All right. <laughs> We're going to meet a very special and nice friend. Yeah, he's <laughs> super nice. Definitely not scary at all. Nah. Yeah. He's a traveling but... salesman. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, right, that's so... Mr. X. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. You can go ahead. And... <laughs> oh, I was going to say, this is where Mr. X spawns. Uh, he will pursue you for a good while, uh, unless you, well, even if you outrun him, he still will uh, pursue you a bit. Uh, right there when he spawns, uh, as long as you aim down sights at a specific spot, when he does that first punch, uh, he'll do the same punch save movement, and you can just go right past him. Um, this part can be a little tricky here because we have to go back to this side of the RPD to grab a, um, to grab a piece of our puzzle there. It's the little... Uh, car jack, right? Um, but yeah, there's also a liquor in here. We have to shoot that. It'll uh, manipulate its movement for later. Um, that'll make sure he doesn't show up here. Um, and then, not just that, right after here, there's going to be a zombie that pops up. Hammy will have to do a quick turn to get out of there. All while Mr. X will come through here, but he can be in a few different spots. He can be... Uh, oh, yeah. He can come I through. I hear him. Okay, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, all right, <laughs> there we're fine, we go. We're fine. Oh shit, can I get by him? Okay, there we go. Yeah, you're good. 
right. Yeah, that's uh, that's scary when you open the door and he just punches you yeah. in the face. That, that's <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's first play. Oh, I was gonna say uh, also another part here where we shoot the ground to bait the zombies in the library, um, and that'll help us. Like those bookcases that we saw Hammy move oh. earlier. Whoa! Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's gonna be a little sketch. Be a little sus. <laughs> But yeah, that bookcase that we moved earlier helps oh, yeah, us he's... for this. Oh yeah, he's here, uh -oh. yeah. Well, good thing you picked up a heal. Ooh, I might get bit again. Or iframes, let's go. <laughs> yeah, look at those iframes. Love to see it. All right, so there's gonna be another zombie coming up here uh, who's gonna be right behind this pillar. And for some reason, uh, he'll be a major issue when you come uh, outside of this, outside of the clock tower. Um, but for some reason, if you shoot him, uh, he gets, I think he gets like teleported down to like the the floor beneath. Pick up the gear. Make sure to pick up, pick the, up gear. the gear. Yes, I, I had my, <laughs> <laughs> I had my fingers placed to like already turn around. <laughs> that was, Sorry, I, I didn't DM'd, mean to interrupt. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I DM'd Mar before the run. And I told her, like, your one job is to remind me to pick up the gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's silly is that you use the gear there. It turns, like, all the gears in the clock tower. But you have to pick it back up to use it here again. And I've definitely killed a PB that way. Because, like, you know, you're on PB pace. You're going, you're going. You come upstairs. You're like, oh, my God, I forgot the large gear downstairs. And, uh, yeah, devastating. But Hammy got it. That was my one reminder, as he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure every RE2 runner has done it at some point. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Wow, he wasn't that. there. Grab that and heal. Also, this guy is running, a, walking away, so we can get right by him. So, uh, Hammy is doing. Well, I was gonna say this is this was a new route to me when I came back to this game this year. I used to run this game at launch and uh, stopped in 2020. Uh, came back this year, and uh, this route is is great because uh, we get to go through this part again and go through the back way to get back to the parking garage. Before, you had to leave the clock tower and go through the library, and Mr. X was right there. And, oh, goodness, that's scary. Yeah. But um, <laughs> uh, And you had to go back through the star's office, all that sort of stuff. But this way is really nice because uh, you absolutely outrun Mr. X here. He won't, he won't even bother you by the time you get here. So that's one less thing to worry about. <laughs> yeah, most of the time you like want to keep track of where Mr. X is. Uh... And if you if you lose him and you just uh, he could just pop up in just the most random spot sometimes. But that luckily with this route, um, yeah. luckily with this route, he uh, uh, he's pretty consistent on where he is. Yeah, and that was a great green hall. That, that was really good. Yeah. Uh, that hallway that he ran through, the zombies are very RNG there. Sometimes they'll be mm. covered all up in there, but that was good. Uh, and then yeah, we got some uh, got some doggos here. Got to take a more specific dogs. line. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want them to pet me. Nah. <laughs> you cannot pet the dogs in this game either. Yeah. Nice. Right. Here we go. Through without getting bit. But yeah, now this is like one of my favorite puzzles in the game, which is the electrical box pu electrical box puzzle. It's very satisfying when it goes right. So yeah, these are the two pieces I collected from the clock tower and the kennels. And it's got to put them all in the right order here. While you're doing this, may I interject just to read a donation? Uh, sure. All right. So we have a donation from Shadow Insignius in the amount yeah. of $10. The comment says, well, hello, sea creature people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this yeah. is the prison. Uh, kind of a pain. I'm just gonna get grabbed by that guy, but I'm gonna throw the flash. Hopefully, yeah, Mr. X got stunned there, and I can just kind of run through. But yeah, a lot of zombies in that area, and it can go very wrong very fast. Yeah, um, and if Mr. X doesn't get flashed there, then he'll stand in your way, he'll start punching you. By the time you get blocked there, the zombies will stop being stunned, and it could turn <laughs> south pretty quickly. But no, we got through there just fine. Um, sea creature people, yes. Uh, 
Hammy, his his whole mascot's a shark. Well, Hammerhead, so he's a yeah. Hammerhead shark. <laughs> um, I, I manatees are my favorite animals, so I, I call myself a manatee. Everyone, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the intel you needed? All right, but yeah, we're out of the RPD. Yay! Which, honestly, not a bad time. Exactly no, that was so. that was good. Yeah. So oh. yeah, Ada's just gonna give us like a little bit of a exposition. She's gonna tell us the roads out right there, in case you couldn't tell. Uh, also, something else of note. Um, I was having stuttering issues with this game, so like every time I auto saved, it or, like dropped frames and stuff. And I found a fix for it, and it was deleting some con- uh, config files. But now it caused Ada's dress to get all like messed up in some part so you'll you'll see it here it's really weird and didn't happen until oh, no. i messed with the files oh no yeah look at it you can see it getting all stretched out oh my weird. god I've, ne- I've never seen that before i've never seen that before what did you do i don't know what i did i just deleted some stuff and it started doing that good job yeah that's that's definitely a first mm. seen this game lots of times too so Alrighty, right. yes, that RPD, we are done. We are never seeing it again, which is great because that's actually like pr- pretty much, I'd say that that's like the roughest part of the run. Um, yeah, lots of RNG. That's probably the most yeah. RNG dependent part of the run is going through the RPD with all the zombies and stuff. Yeah. Um, usually the sewers is pretty consistent. Um, you just have a little bit with like the G mutants later on, um, which yeah. we'll see in a little bit. Yeah, there's like one spot in the sewers, one spot in the labs. That's a little difficult, but pretty much everywhere in the RPD, the you're just stressed just because, like, like, uh, mm. like Cammy said, all that RNG. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna meet our little our little gator friend here. Actually, I have no idea if it's a crocodile or an alligator. I think it's a crocodile. Cause, cause Ada calls it an alligator, but on the on the map thing on the top, it says a uh, crocodile area. Yeah, so, like crocodiles <laughs> are like they're 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 big and bumpy. I think uh, alligators have like a thinner snout. But yeah, this part is just pretty much an auto scroller section. Um, we start off by holding A to go left. Um, you're gonna you hold D to go right, and he monches twice. And then we hold A, and then he monches again. That spells Ada, by the way. Um, <laughs> and that's about it. There you go. And then he's going to take a nice nap. And I pick up this grenade. And that grenade's going to go in a very specific spot in my inventory. Uh, because uh, that's where the wristband that I get later is going to go. But yeah, he's just sleeping. It's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, we're going to see some more dress shenanigans here. What's really cool is in this game, uh, your defense items, you know, your knife, your grenades, and all that stuff. Oh my god, you were right about the chest. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, those get set to your... There's, like, hotkeys for those, which is great, because in uh, at least Resident Evil Remake 1, uh, there's none of that. You pick up defense items, but you'd have to go into your inventory to select those and stuff, so it's really nice there's a shortcut for those here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I basically just kind of scroll through them by holding space, and I could toggle through them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that grenade's gonna be <laughs> the grenade's oh gonna be God. important for uh for G two when we are leaving the sewers. Monsters like that to who? Our military? Somebody else's? All right, this is a pretty slow section, so if there are any like donations or any reads that you have to do, this is a good time. All oh, right. Um, just making sure you can hear me, right? My internet yes. may be having yes. some issues. Okay, you can hear me. Perfect. Um, so, yes, we do have a donation from Environat in the amount of $25, which, uh, by the way, uh, $25 is what you need to do to get the uh, Twilight Princess Boomerang Raffle Incentive, which will only be open for the duration of this run. So if you would like to get a chance to win the Boomerang, Please be sure to donate by selecting the rewards option on the donation page. And um, to get to the donation page, please type exclamation donate. But uh, yeah, that being said, Environat's message says, Clink clonk, 
great runner and commentary. <laughs> Y'all are group doing great. Hammer eighty nine bongo. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. <laughs> But yeah, so now we're in the Ada section. Uh, it's a pretty so short section. Um, she has this little uh, electronic gun that we use to like mess with like power boxes and stuff. I'm gonna try to run past this guy. Oh, he bit me. It's all right. It's all right yeah. if I get bit in this area because Ada's and Leon's health bars are separate, so it's not a not a big deal if I get bit. I just lose a little bit of time. Yeah, there's not too many. You don't have to encounter. Too many zombies here it's really just that one guy so he could be a yeah. little little mean yeah usually he comes around this corner but i don't know where he is right now oh he's on the ground still interesting nope. <laughs> he tried <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no right. matter what oh go ahead <laughs> i was gonna say uh we're gonna go through this next part and we're gonna say hi to mr x again oof yeah but luckily, he's pretty harmless here. Also, we don't look at him, so uh, if, can if you can't him. see him, <laughs> if you can't see him, he doesn't exist. Oh, I yeah. don't look at him. It makes me scared to look at him, so I just <laughs> pretend he's not there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and uh, one thing I'm note with the little electronic gun that I'm using is I'm using it to control these little electrical boxes, and you can see there's like a little like wheel that goes and once it fills up is when i like switch the um you know switch the lever or whatever it is um and they have like some sort of like momentum to them so i actually don't need to fill it up all the way um there's two speeds of them and with the fast one i only need to fill it up like three quarters of the way and it will finish it'll like the momentum will carry and it'll finish the uh finish the circle and with the slower one i need to fill it up to about like 90 percent yeah so just a couple like half second time saves and stuff there. It it, it all adds up, so. <laughs> yeah. You realize that. And you So yeah. Annette's going to go on a little spiel. Uh I don't really listen to her anymore. Uh so, okay. but, yeah, this is the incinerator. It's just a little puzzle with these uh with these gears. Yeah, the first time you play it, a little little panic panic mode going on here, but uh, it's it's relatively simple as long as you follow those uh, yellow guides. All right, yeah, and then we're pretty much done with the Ada section. Yeah, a uh, little bit of lore. Annette Birkin there, she's the wife of William Birkin, a.k.a. G, so that nice, uh, handsome mutant guy with the big eyeball on his shoulder, that's, that's her husband, so they were... Uh, they were they were in charge of the G virus here. Uh, yeah, she's she's not a very nice lady. <laughs> All right, so we're back as Leon. Where are you? Uh, basically, what happened there is uh, Annette like sabotaged Ada, and now Ada's trapped in the sewers, injured, and we have to go rescue her. Sewer is pretty straightforward. Uh, not a terrible section. Uh, we get introduced to a new enemy here. Um, you know, just a just a little bit of a <laughs> slog, <laughs> a literal slog. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Usually, when you're playing this game casually, the G mutants are big bullet sponges. They have a lot of health. Um, but we're gonna abuse their their animations to. To get past him. Also, we're gonna run by uh, this zombie named Nicholas Cage. Uh, he's pretty the harmless. <laughs> this guy, though. Yeah, you have to shoot him, even though he's facing away from you, or else he will turn around and bite you as you're going past him. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, you get. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I was gonna say sometimes you get lucky enough and get a crit headshot, but those are random. Yeah. Yeah, we're going deeper into the sewers, and then we're going to be introduced to our G mutants here. And there he's just kind of hiding out under the water to pop up. All we're going to do is we're going to shoot him, and then we're just going to run right past him. Yeah, you got to make sure you don't shoot him uh, too close, because uh, then, you know, he'll, he'll stun you a little bit, then he'll grab you. If you shoot it too far, then you won't be able to run past him in time uh, to take advantage of those little iframes there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, got got to shoot it at a... Specific distance. Where'd she go? 
We're gonna hop down here. And then I'm gonna pull this lever and then I'm gonna run and grab some bullets because I have to wait for this bridge to lower. So I'm gonna grab these bullets in this room while it lowers and it won't lose me any time. Because I have to wait anyways. Yeah, um, what's interesting about uh, new game speedruns for Resident Evil games is that we use the minimal amount of bullets possible. So if it's creeping you out a little bit, it's like, oh my god, he only has like 10, 14 bullets or anything like that. That's okay. Uh, we only ever use them to shoot zombies. And, uh, and by the time we get to the lab, we don't even really do that at all. Uh, so, And also, just for your inventory sake, you want to make sure that you don't have uh, more than 12, essentially. Or, or you have, like, what, like 13 or 15 or something. Uh, but other than that, we really don't pick oh. up more than we need. Uh-oh, I'm going to get bit here. I did not get bit. Oh, my God. I got stuck on pretzels there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm going to shoot the leg off this zombie. Just so we not a bother, because I'm going to be running back <laughs> to this area. <laughs> yeah. And another G-Mutant coming out of here. We're just going to stick left. And then we're going to see him again. He's going to be RNG, whether he's out of the water or in the water. And then it's just going to... Either way, we're going to shoot him, but we're going to do just a little bit differently. Uh, depending on what his position is when we come back. Yeah, because there's two different RNG for him, right? Yeah. Yeah. gonna run pick up some more uh item spots and then just before i grab this rook piece i'm gonna move some move my healing down here because i want to put this rook piece right where one of those healings was and we got to get through this room quickly before that zombie gets us and we're gonna head down and then we have 10 bullets right now so we have plenty for the next section and this guy he's out of the water so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna shoot him while i'm up here and then jump down, and he actually just sinks into the water, so. Yeah, he's never really like that for me, so I yeah. I freak out anytime he's there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we have Pretzels there. He's getting out of the water, so um, the position Pretzels is there uh, when we're going through that section will determine where he's going to be when we come back again through this area. Um, so since he was climbing out of the water, I'll have to be aware because he uh, will most likely be on the stairs that I need to go up. So I'll just need to watch out for him and just uh, stun him if if he is. So Hammy's coming upon uh, the the trickiest part. This is uh, yeah. this is a trick. The trickiest part of the sewer section. It's where we come across a few different G mutants, the G adults. Um, oh so. He's going to take a few specific shots here and make sure to take uh, careful lines here so he doesn't get grabbed. Oh, uh oh. He didn't fall into the water. I got grabbed. Oh, oh no, it's okay. That's not good. All right. Good news is there's a blue herb uh, in the next section up here. I'm yeah. Try to just run past. Uh oh. Oh. Oh All no, right. the body block. <laughs> Alright, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah, now he's coughing, and hopefully this guy doesn't grab me. Alright, alright. We're okay. Good. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, poison can Ooh. be such a downer just because, uh, yeah, Leon will slow down. He'll start coughing. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a good time. But yeah, there is a blue orb in here. It'll, it'll give you some relief, so that's good. Yeah. And then, contrary to popular belief, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on this game. Uh, poison doesn't actually drain your health, at least on standard. Yeah, I, I mean, I, funny enough, as much as I played this game, I've never played it on hardcore. Mm -hmm. But yeah, in other, at least in Resident Evil 1 Remake, uh, when you get poison, your health uh, depletes over time. It doesn't kill you, but it brings you down to literally 1 HP. So in this game, not nah, just, uh, you just go slow and you cough and it's miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so this here is just a uh, really intricate uh puzzle where you insert the chess pieces and take them out and stuff it's pretty simple once you play this game a few times and uh, but yeah i know the first time you're in here you're just sticking these in and doors are opening doors are closing yeah. <laughs> and all that sort of stuff it's an interesting little maze here but uh this is for a puzzle coming up here though so we got all of our pieces <laughs> Now, going right. back through the G adult section, uh, there is RNG here, so hopefully, uh, bless RNG here. <laughs> bless up. Yeah, we'll 
Control C word. All right, there's a guy standing here. Let's see. Okay, he's going. Oh. Going for the slam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they have a couple different animations. Um, the one that he did there was like he brings like that inner head out, and then he starts like spewing these little babies, and you could just run past him there because he'll be stuck in that animation. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I went down too early. I got poisoned oh, no. again. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, this one. Um, yeah, you can take advantage of iframes here, uh, but yeah, sometimes uh, he can he can grab you there. But it's okay. I've done this before too. It happens to the best of us. <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, because I used the red, green, and blue herb, I have that little shield in the bottom right, so I didn't get poisoned. Yeah, it gives you kind of like a temporary shield, mm. temporary, temporary. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You so don't get he didn't do a ton of either. He didn't do a ton of damage to me, so all right, gotta watch out. Yep, there's pretzels on the stairs. But yeah, good thing I didn't get poisoned because otherwise I'd be coughing and hacking throughout this entire run back. Yeah, and there's another bluer behind the big door here, but still, uh, we have to solve a puzzle before getting there. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is a chess piece puzzle. We use them to open this door here. Um, there are some like panels that have like, uh, like it tells you what chess piece goes in there, but the rest you have to figure out from a little like uh, riddle that's on the table over here. But luckily everything goes in the same spot every time you play the game, so don't have to worry no, about it. No RNG here, thank God. <laughs> So yeah, on our way here, uh, we get blessed with uh, some more. We get blessed with a full heal if we w if we wish to take it. But we're gonna solve a puzzle and uh, we're we're gonna start our G two boss fight immediately after. Yeah. So I picked up the grenade earlier. Uh, I'm gonna use it here. He's gonna slam his hand through the top of the roof right here, and basically using the grenade, uh, it damages him through the roof. And usually he does like a little cycle where he starts clawing through the roof in multiple spots. But because we did enough damage to him with the grenade, he automatically hops behind this door and uh, it skips a cycle and saves like 20 seconds uh, just so you don't have to wait for him. And then we're gonna go on to the boss fight. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of uh, a lot of us would agree that this is the. Uh most difficult of the G fights just because, um, you know, you have to do things so quickly here. Um, you know, we have to deal with this crate. We have to deal with RNG that uh, G does here and stuff like that. So uh, this one, this one certainly can be pretty tricky. Uh, we're going to be utilizing our knife slashes again. Um, like uh, Hammy will be standing in very specific spots and uh, we're just going to be hacking away right in his shoulder there. We're intentionally going to let this knife break because uh, we do have to discard it a set basically and then we're just going to Keep slashing until we get below 50 HP, and then use the uh, button there to get the uh, container back here, because that will kill G immediately. Ooh, he started running at me. I got a little scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, you, you did right. just fine. Wait, I'm just going to pick up the flash and the knife there. Uh, we're going to need that for the labs coming up. You are making great progress here. I, I, I'm always amazed how quick this game goes. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, the first time you play it, this game takes, like, eight to ten hours or so. Mm-hmm. Pretty much uh, every Resident Evil game for the first time, yeah, it could take you anywhere between eight and 16 hours, depending if you take your time and read mm -hmm. stuff and things like that. Nice. I don't know about you, Resident Evil 4 took me a long time, the newest one. <laughs> yeah, I think it took me, like, 15, 16 hours to beat. Took me like 20. <laughs> That's the longest it's taken me, oh. but no, it was it was really great. <laughs> we got to see our homeboy Leon there too. Basic, mm -hmm. it pretty much plays pretty similar to this too. So if y'all are ever interested, uh, that's another speed game y'all can pick up. All right, squeezed in in front of Ada. That's like RNG, <laughs> whether you get it or not, to where you can get in before her. But it saves like a couple seconds. Oh, I didn't know that was RNG. I thought it was just movement related. <laughs> I, I I don't know what exactly it is, but sometimes like Leon doesn't get that full acceleration. So. Silly Leon. Mm. <laughs> 
All righty, we are in the last section of the game. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward, pretty linear. Uh, essentially, we're going to have to... Uh, Ada gave us a wristband, which gives us access to the lab, but uh, we're basically going to traverse through here. Uh, we have to upgrade our wristband a couple times to get to more, uh, I guess, classified sections here because um, mm. you know we want to steal the G-virus and stuff here. But um, we have some normal zombies up in here that we don't really mess with, uh, but then we get introduced to... Uh, couple we get introduced to a new scary enemy here though so yeah. um we're gonna go through here and pick up another knife yeah these zombies in here are harmless we just run past them and they they don't bother you yeah they're in a cafeteria they're eating their dinner which is yeah. uh not actual food it's human <laughs> so uh yeah lovely <laughs> all right we're gonna drop down here in the kitchen what else do you find in the kitchen but knives so not a chef's knife, just a regular uh, survival yep. knife. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, is it going to be a zombie here? We'll see what he does. It's going to stun oh, he's him. Far? Nice. Yeah. Sometimes, like, if your DA is too high, he'll just tank that headshot, and you either have to shoot him again, or he'll bite you. Yeah, and sometimes, even if it's not high like that, uh, he could be right outside that door, uh, just kind of like how Mr. X was outside your door earlier. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> Those are really the only times we get jump scared in these games, because they're not scary when you speed run them, right? It's just when there's RNG, and they're literally in front of you when they normally aren't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know we both had uh, that one door after going into the library. There's sometimes the, the big zombie there right behind the door. Oh, oh yeah. my god. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it does sometimes, and that's scary. All right, do All we right, have so just a moment to uh, read off a donation? Uh, yeah. All right, perfect. So we have one from Soph Topic in the amount of $10, and the message is, Hi, zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Soph. All right, so we're going to be introduced to a new enemy here. These are the IVs. Uh, the IVs are interesting because if they grab you, and if you don't have a defensive item, they will kill you no matter what health you're at. One hit. That is it. And, uh, yeah, you have to... You you need every single knife that's in your inventory, uh, unfortunately. So you just got to make sure... They have... Uh, they have these little eyeballs throughout their body. Uh, if, when you when you shoot them, they'll they'll get stunned a little bit. So um, you know if if they get in your way, you gotta that's that's the only way to mitigate them there. So we're given this uh, solution for the greenhouse here, uh, but we have to do a puzzle to uh, actually fill it up. <laughs> so um, this puzzle here, very, very simple. It's the same solution every time. As long as you memorize which colored buttons to do, uh, you could do this very quickly. Yeah, it's literally just red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, and then you're done. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little different on hardcore. I don't know what the solution is, but it's still a pretty simple puzzle. I cannot tell you. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, we're going to see here the little bowls and the ivies here that we're going to use to stun uh, the little orange things. He took a... Whoa. <laughs> All right. I used a lot of bullets there. That's <laughs> a little scary. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But now we're coming on to like the worst part of the game. Yeah, this is besides the RPD earlier, I'd say this is like the hardest part of the game here. Mm -hmm. uh, we are encountering the lab lickers here. They haven't spawned yet, but um, what you don't see over there to the left is actually a group of zombies. There's about four of them. There's like three or four of them. Uh, our first licker spawns here, but kind of like what we did earlier in the RPD, as long as you look up in the ceiling, uh, he'll miss you every time. Um, but yeah, we're going to grab a puzzle piece up here, uh, the little signal modulator. Uh, we're going to solve a couple puzzles with that. Um, a couple zombies will spawn in here on our way back down, but they're pretty harmless uh, as long as you hit your shots on them. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and explain so I'm not messing you up when you get back down there. Uh, so when when Hammy gets back down to where the lab lickers are, there's going to be two that spawn there. Uh, along with the zombies, the zombies down there wake up and the zombie placement are RNG. But Hammy's going to take a specific shot and then throw that flash grenade and uh, he should be home free.
Again, solution for this one is the same every time. All right, see if this guy, there's liquor there. Hopefully he misses. All right, cool. Nice. My, my heart, my heart rate every time I go through this section is always super high. <laughs> yeah, same here. It is a, uh, cause if, um, either if you don't take the right shot, if you shoot it late, if you shoot it in a um, different spot, um, if you throw your flash too late, um, because ideally when you throw the flash, uh, you want them still on the ceiling. Um, they'll both be on the ceiling, they'll fall, all that sort of stuff. But sometimes uh, if you get that pattern just a little bit off, that can that can throw you off a little bit. It could be a little tricky. They'll mm -hmm. start attacking. It's, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna throw another flash here. I'm gonna aggro them. Uh, hopefully they miss me with those swings. All right. Nice. And then, hope. Oh, all right. That's got a little, little slash. We're okay. Just one. Yeah. NBD. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now there's gonna be maybe a couple IVs. This is RNG. Uh, it looks like I am open here. Very good. I'm gonna grab that for to heal before G3. And then I'm going to put in the herbicide that we got. And then it's going to kill all the herbs. And there there was a guy plastered to the wall um, who had the next uh, wristband that we need. And with the herbicide, it killed all the plants. So it's, he's going to drop to the floor. We're going to go pick it up. But it doesn't kill the ivies. That's what doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, it like stuns it. Because there's going to be another one. Oops, that doesn't go there. That goes there. That stands up here. And I'm going to try to quick turn here and get past him. Nice. And then in case you didn't hear, uh, Mr. X popped through the glass there, but um, he's, he he's harmless. Sm <laughs> he smashes through the glass. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was another uh, RNG section. Uh, that Ivy there, his name is Negan. Uh, he could be in a couple different places. Sometimes... Uh, oops gonna heal here and then yeah just sometimes he can be in like a weird spot to where he's like super hard to hit the bulb um but yeah if you get grabbed there you die and you pretty much get sent back only like a minute or so that time or maybe like 30 seconds but it's still still a little bit of a pain sometimes yeah and uh, sometimes he'll be facing away from you uh and you have to like knife him right mm -hmm. yeah so he can be a tricky one All right, so we're heading to uh, like the last like major hurdle of of this game, which is G three. Uh, I kind of want to explain how his boss fight works. Yeah, so G three, he has. Um, we're going to be utilizing all of our knives here. Um, literally, the entire boss fight will be done with the knives. So um, we're gonna. Well, I was gonna say Jesus. I. <laughs> It used to be shotgun grenades and knives, but these will all be straight up <laughs> knives. It's a, uh -huh. it, it's a, it's a very, very specific. Uh, we we kill the eyeballs in a specific order. Uh, once we pop those eyeballs, um, his center chest will open and slash all those. But yeah, so um, literally once the fight starts, you're just go go go. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're gonna and you want your DA at a specific number here. Yours I see is at six, so this should go the same as right. usual. Yeah. Oh, and not just that. So we're also going to have to swap through our knives really quickly. Uh, you'll see Hammy go into his menu a couple times. You basically equip and unequip the handgun so you can keep sl uh, slashing your knife. Uh, that is imperative for this fight because if not, you're just gonna not you're not gonna be able to one cycle him. Yep, very specific movement there. If you uh, bait his attack like that, he should always go down there. And then the back eyeball, oh. trickiest one to get. That is a did whoa! Oh my god, that was uh, that was great. He's in a very like weird spot right now. I don't. <laughs> yeah, ideally you want to make you you want him you want his arms there. Uh, you don't want to be oh, in a corner essentially. Yeah, he's standing up early. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, I'm gonna grab some bullets real quick. 
Yeah, once he gets yeah. to like this super mutated form, uh, there. Thankfully, oh my god, throughout this whole arena, there you got handgun bullets, you got flamethrower fuel, you got grenades. So there's lots of stuff here to help you with this fight. Yeah. But yeah, um, if you miss the one cycle, you'll just have to you know pick up a few things here yeah. and uh, keep going at it. So you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to heal. <laughs> Oops. What did I do? Hold on. You got this, dude. Uh, sure. All right. That was probably the most scuffed G3 I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's totally fine. He can be a very mean one. So, um, no, I think I think you adapted just well. You, you adapted just fine. Thankfully, yeah, thank, thank goodness for handgun bullets up in there. Yeah, I actually didn't use any because I thought it was going to spawn more eyes. And he didn't. He just had his chest eyes open. Yeah, that's good. No, I didn't even need to use the handgun bullets, but I picked them up. But I'm going to shoot him here anyway. Just to clear the inventory spot. <laughs> now we're, we're yeah. proud of you, dude. You did great. But yeah, ideally you want to uh, pretty much get his health all the way down before he stands back up the first time after that first stun. Yeah. And it's okay. But, like he, yeah. he was standing in that awkward spot there, but you know, that's, that's okay. I think you yeah. did fine. Uh, I wasn't given... able to get in the right position to get all like the knife slashes as much as I wanted to. But yeah, but so like, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, so this is the last elevator ride down. Uh, if there's any like last minute uh, donations or anything uh, before we get into the final gauntlet, this is a good time. Yeah, absolutely. So as of right now, we have no new donations, but I do want to just say uh, that the Say No More language bid war is open for the duration of this run. So currently the Irish Gaelic language is winning at $345 with Spanish behind at $270. Uh, Japanese is sitting at $135, and English uh, kind of looking like a no hope at $10. So please <laughs> vote for your favorite language or just a language you would like to hear the word no being said in Happy Bear's run of the Say No More game. Awesome. So Hammy right. took a couple specific shots there on the elevator to manipulate the Ivy's movements here. That's, whoa. Ooh. It's okay, I picked up the extra knife. Yeah, you're good, so, you are good. Yeah. You only need two for Mr. X here anyways, uh, depending on the health of your knives, so you should be mm -hmm. fine. All right, and we're gonna see our favorite man again. <laughs> there he is, I hi to Mr. X again. Everyone's gonna run past him. Pretty much the same same kind of strat we used the first time we saw him. Uh, just get into the right position, and we, if he lunges at you, you're just able to run right past him. <laughs> All right. Uh, because I picked up the extra knife, I don't have the inventory spot, so I'm just gonna uh, discard this knife to pick up the plug. Yeah, you need two inventory slots for this one. A couple ga a couple spots in this game, you need the. Items will do that, but this is the only, this and the gear are the only ones you pick up that need two slots. Alrighty, Ooh. now Mr. X transformed into Super Tyrant. Um, this boss fight actually uh, pretty simple. It, it may not seem like it. We're gonna <laughs> slash his waist until uh, until he staggers three times. And after uh, we get him to stagger three times, we are just going to uh, dodge all of his attacks. Uh, we just call it uh, doing a little dance. Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. If you can see the health in the top right, I know it's small. He is like 10 billion health. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> Trust me, you cannot like, e even if you lay in all of your ammo in here, it's, uh, mm. it, it's uh, not going to work. So um, They've learned pretty early on. All you have to do is just do those knife slashes to stagger him, and then just uh, do this because that the rocket launcher will pop down uh, after a certain amount of time, anyways. So, um, if you as long as you stay to um, his left or your right and all that stuff, you can anticipate uh, which movements he's going to do there. So. 
Yeah, you pretty much just put your face in his like armpit right here. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it smells great. It's really nice because uh, if you're actually far away from him, he can do like this really scary like running uh, claw attack to you, which is like a one hit kill. But if we stay close to him, all right. Ooh, okay. Mm. All right, nice. and there's Mr. X. And that's pretty much the run. Time is going to end when I trigger the cutscene up here. Um, there's going to be some zombies that pop out from behind this door. It's going to rocket launcher them. All right, and we'll be in time in three, two. One and time. Woo! GG's. All right, GG. Can we get out of here? That was great. Good job. Yeah, fantastic <laughs> run. Yeah, thank you. But yeah, just before we finish up, I just want to give you know a quick shout out to um, everyone I see in the chat, everyone here running the event. Um, it's a really great event. Uh, I want to shout out the RE2 community. I want to thank Mar for A, getting me into these games, and B, <laughs> yeah, it's her fault I'm running this right now. Um, I think I bothered him like all last year or ever since we met. I'm like, you should, you should play Resident Evil. You should speed on Resident Evil. So yeah, uh, yeah. He, he picked up this game uh, this year and he's down, you, you got your time down to like a 56 or something? It's a 56. 55, 55, it's a 55 40, now. Yeah. yeah, that's that's amazing. That's a very competitive time. He's been he's been running it, you know, just started this year. So he's been he's been doing great and uh, really happy that he's part of the Resident Evil community. So thank you. Thank you for having me, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for commentating. It's uh, really nice having you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But yeah. And then the final cutscene. We're going to see Claire right here. Uh, who is she, by the way? Uh, haven't seen her the entire game. <laughs> you did, but you skipped the cutscenes. <laughs> yeah, we saw her a little bit in the gas station before we skipped that cutscene. <laughs> And RPD. And RPD. <laughs> yeah. That was great. What was, uh, what was the official time? Uh, official in-game time, 57.02. That's not bad at all, honestly. Mm -hmm. That's great. Given all the heals and the, the G3 and all that stuff, that's a great yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I lost like a good minute to G3. So <laughs> that's I mean, that's fine, because uh, that mean, it means you're consistent, you know, yeah. uh, getting these <laughs> getting these good times here. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, I believe that ends this portion. So where can we find you two? Uh, I stream over at twitch.tv slash Hammerhead Labs. Um, I stream uh, at random intervals because <laughs> I've been super busy lately. And then I'm also on Twitter at Hammerhead underscore Labs. Um, and then Mar. Oh, I'm at twitch.tv slash Marforia. Um, I also SL Twitter. Um, I speed run a lot of Resident Evil games. Uh, I speed run about four or five of them, something like that. Currently focused on Resident Evil 1 remake. Um, I also speed run uh, random. I, I also speed run Spyro and Crash, <laughs> like Hammy, <laughs> and uh, just started learning We Love Katamari, Monkey Island, stuff like that, but mainly mm -hmm. Resident Evil. So, uh, but yeah. All right. Sounds good. So please be sure to follow these two if you liked what you saw. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that being said, um, the Say No More language uh, bid war is closed, so the Irish Gaelic language is what we're going to be saying no in in that game. Very excited for that. So yeah, I believe that is it. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, bye, everyone. Bye, thank you. Mm -hmm.